are uh, in Keough Island, and we have a very special guest to bring you. Steve Cohen is here. Uh, he, of course, is the chairman and CEO and president of Point72, a longtime uh, veteran of Wall Street and hedge fund manager, and beginning his fourth season now as the owner and chairman and CEO of the New York Mets. And uh, it is great to have you on Good the program here, for the very yeah. first time. Yeah. For the very first time. Hey, you know, you got to try everything once, right? You got to try so, everything once. Well, we'll see whether we, we, we get to do it more than once. Um, I want to talk to you about so many things. I want to talk to you about sports, the business of sports, owning this team now. Sure. And then I want to get into the markets and what you're thinking about uh, more broadly as well. But um, where we want to start was actually the team this year, yeah. unfortunately, yeah. Uh, given, given, given the win streak or really the opposite in terms yes. of where we are. How you think about that as an owner but how do you think about that as a hedge fund manager? Well, I mean, we're only, it's only four games into the season, right? right? Be the equivalent of getting off to a bad start, let's say, in a hedge fund year. You have a, you have a couple down days early in January. You still got a lot of time left to, uh, you know, do what you normally do. And so, yeah, nobody wants to start zero and four. I mean, uh, but... You know, it's, it's early, right? And, you know, during the season, you're going to have losing streaks. We just happen to have one at the beginning. So what is this like for you? Now, I mean, your whole life, I think, has fundamentally changed. You're now in the public eye in a way. Uh, in the that, public eye, yeah. That, that uh, you haven't been. Yeah. You, you, well, I should say, there's been a shift in the pub, public eye, and now you're actually doing interviews and things yeah. uh, and being more public. How do you feel just about that? You know, I, it's something that um, I, I knew buying the Mets would be much more public. And... Um, but I enjoy it, you know, like I, I realized I enjoyed it. I had no idea, right? When you sit behind screens for as long as I have and you're kind of, you know, not necessarily, you know, have to do that type of stuff. And so I actually enjoy it. I actually enjoy interacting with the fans and doing the press conferences. And, and you, know, it's, it's, you know, it's just a stretch for me, you know, something different. And how much of being, of doing what you've done in business is similar or different to this in terms of the analytics uh, the way you think about, I mean, you trade stocks. Yes. Uh, you yeah. own a team. You trade players. Right. Is it is it similar or totally different? Yeah, I mean, it's different. I mean, you know, people think that I'm make I'm not making the decisions. I mean, my baseball people are making the decisions. My job is to, you know, when when they they need me to support their decision, you know, they come to me and say, "This is what I want to do." I've never said no to anything, and so I mean, we have discussions and, and we talk about it. But I'm not, I'm not making, you know, those ideas are not coming from me, and which is totally different than running my hedge fund. My hedge fund, I'm much more involved. Uh, right. But, you know, frankly, in, in my hedge fund also, I, we, we have 200 portfolio managers. I'm not telling them what to do either. Okay, I, I, you know, I, I give them the risk limits and things like that. And I'm always available if they need to discuss anything. So I'm used to operating in a very decentralized way, and I give people a lot of rope. Um there's big questions about baseball, both the valuations of these teams. You spent uh, a, a, a lot of money on yours and also yeah. how much money these teams spend on a given year yeah. uh, for players, the different markets, big markets, small markets. Yes. What do you think of the system right now in terms of what's happened yeah. in baseball? Yeah, I think, you know, we're in one of those moments in baseball where people are thinking about, OK, what do we like about the system, what we don't? You've got 30 owners, you've got 30 different opinions. And so, you know, we're still trying to figure it out. Um, there's no doubt that smaller market clubs aren't crazy about large market clubs spending a lot of money. Um, all within, you know, we're all right. operating within the rules that baseball sets out. Do you, does, does, mon does money buy winning? I mean, people say money buys, clearly, does, doesn't buy love. Clearly not, okay? Right. Okay, because we tried that. I mean, the real problem is if, if you're trying to build a team through free agency, that's such a tough place to be. Because you're fighting the aging curve. You're buying players based on their previous history, but they're getting older. Right. As they get older, performance over time declines. And so it's a tough place to be. So what you really want to do is develop talent, which is no different than what I do in my hedge fund. Okay? And, that, and that's the similarities between right. the two. Okay, but yeah. you have been famous for cutting your losses in, in the hedge fund world. Yeah. Famously, if, yeah. if things are not going well, you, you, yeah. you cut your losses. Can you do that in baseball? Well, I kind of did it last year, right? right? You kind of did. did. That's kinda where I was going. That's, oh, that's where the oh, question okay. was going. Yeah, so you're leading me to, the, uh, to that question. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I looked at it and realized that the team was probably not going to make the playoffs. And even if it did, it probably wasn't going to get very far in the playoffs. And so it was a, it was a just, I think at that point we had a 15% chance of making the playoffs. 
a lot of teams in front of us. It would have been hard to pull off. And, and so, you know, we had contracts that were, you know, I felt it wasn't going right. to change in, 20, in 23. In 24, it probably wouldn't get any better. So, I, you know, I did, I did a complete pivot. Right. And I think I shocked baseball in the extent that I did it. Uh, but for me, it's just natural because, you know, I looked and said, okay, I, I, don't, like the I don't like the positions I have. Right. And so I wanted to make a change. Uh, you want a ring. How, much, how, how many years yeah. do you think it will take you to get there? How much will it cost? Well, the, the co I don't care about the cost side. I mean, I think over time, my... But you, think, no, you don't no, think about no, this no, as, as no, philanthropic, the, do you? I do. You do? That's why I bought the team. Okay. Well, that's exactly why I bought the team. And, and you know, I, I said, and I said in my original press conference, if I can make millions of people happy, how cool is that? And so I actually view it as a civic responsibility. And, and um, now, listen, nobody wants to lose money forever and spend money and not, not have success. And, I, and to me, I, I deem success as not only winning the World Series, getting in the playoffs and winning the World Series. It's also developing an, uh, like a deep farm system that creates, creates talent over, you know, over the years, right. over and over again.